how you doing? We just hit the road a little while ago and we are right now in Sheridan, Wyoming. Kasha, my lovely bride, is behind the camera right now. We're doing a little road trip as the title states. We're getting an Atlas. Yes, if you're not familiar with AT Overland and the Atlas Topper as well as the Habitat and the Aterra, you gotta check them out over on um, AT Overland. They have some great products. This is one of the things that I was kind of holding out for and releasing right away because we weren't sure if it was gonna happen and it's actually been on, I think, a four month, five month order. Uh, we ordered it last year in 2023, so now here we're in February 2024. We're on our way to go get it. We're gonna head up, stay overnight, get the topper put on and hang out over in Montana for a little while and then head back the next day. So we thought we'd take you guys along for a ride and uh, we'll go from there. So come out for a ride and thanks for joining us. gang we went and did it as you see we got ourselves a topper and as the title states in the thumbnail it's the AT Overland Atlas uh, so starting off first part yes we took a road trip Kosh and I up to Bozeman Montana uh, spent a few days up there got the topper put on hung out for a little bit and then drove back again just kind of a little vacation kind of thing for the two of us um, I gotta say, blessed with the weather. I mean, how many times do you think you drive around Montana and Wyoming and have 50, 60 degree weather and beautiful open skies and clear roads? So yeah, we were really happy with that. Um, getting down into meat and potatoes, I have notes here I'm going to try to follow. Um, it's just basically trying to stay on park because part of the problem is there is so much about the AT Overland Atlas to share and talk about. It would take an hour to walk you through everything and all the details and all that and I'm gonna default for you guys if you want to learn a lot more about this head over to AT Overland's videos Mario does a walkthrough of this Atlas topper not this particular one but they have one on the back of a Nissan Titan a first gen that he did the video is a little old but the actual topper itself and everything and all the technology is all the same a little bit about AT and uh, what are they? Well, it's a family owned business, got started about 20 some years ago down in Arizona. They make a variation of toppers for all different size trucks. You'll see them, you'll see some smaller units on uh, the Jeep, uh, maybe like a Gladiator platform, I think it is, but they have Tacomas and Tundras and they have F-150, 250, 350, the Rams, the, the Chevy series, all that kind of stuff. So they will accommodate a lot of people's rigs. 
The second thing is too is they can accommodate all the different size beds. The five, five and a half, six, six and a half foot up to an eight foot bed. And they make five different types of platforms. Three of the platforms all use the same type of look as my Atlas does here. They have the Atlas, the Summit, and the Habitat. The Atlas is a platform where the roof actually expands completely upright and gives you a bunch of living space and room to sit up above. The Summit actually opens up kind of like a clamshell in a way. If you've known about those rooftop tents, they just kind of open up like that. And then the Habitat, actually, you've probably been seeing them around when it came to Expedition Overland. The Crofts and their crew have been running the Habitats on some of their Toyotas and the Tacomas and Tundras for a while. And that's the one that, that sits flat and then it flips open all the way. Uh, so all three of those are really nice platforms and they all have the same base like this. And that is a composite material. In this case, this composite material is actually cladded in aluminum. The aluminum is a .090 thickness and it's really nice when they come to the build quality of these things and uh, what they've done in engineering. And so what I'll do is I'll talk a little bit about what they do, how they do it perhaps, and why we chose this topper over some of the competitors. The big things about AT was their build quality. When Kosh and I went over to the um, Expo Mountain West down in uh, Colorado last year, we did that with the intentions in shopping around for a new topper for Ruby. We were originally gonna look for something for Trip, but when we started looking at some of these toppers, with their size and their weight, Trip being what he is, a gasser engine, a V8 and everything, was really good, almost 400 horsepower and so on and so forth. But when you start building up on a, a, a gasoline platform, you start to really affect the, the, the miles per gallon. Switching over from a V8 to a uh, diesel, the 6.7 uh, liter diesel on his Cummins, gives me that opportunity. So when we did that, we ended up looking around at the toppers. Now, we did have a couple of favorites, fan favorites, and I'm not gonna start throwing people under the bus because everybody makes a topper to fit whatever they think they want, what kind of dreams and aspirations they have. And I have to say, after looking at them, I was not disappointed in, in pretty much any topper that we looked at. There were some really cool, innovative uh, platforms out there, but not something that Kosh and I wanted to get into. A lot of the platforms that are on top or on the back of trucks like this that are called toppers, uh, they're just a thin aluminum, meaning there's no insulation in them at all. Also, the other thing is a lot of them are simply just a clamshell style. So both of those two immediately got off of our radar because we didn't want something like that. We were going to this, we didn't want to lose um, storage or uh, uh, being agile or mobile inside the back of the truck like a top, like a, a clamshell does. And but I also wanted some durability and I wanted to be able to be kind of more four season. The standard aluminum, the thin wall aluminum frame systems, even though they are nice, uh, they don't offer a lot of the insulation. And yeah, sure, maybe you could probably work something out that way. But again, it's another cost we I would have to do. And with my time and schedule and everything, I didn't, want to, I didn't want to bite into that apple. So uh, we started leaning away from those and going towards some others. Now, again, it goes back to the build quality. A lot of them have a nice, good aluminum frame structure, but the outside and the inside is basically just cladded with uh, like your typical RV and your camper style paneling on the inside. And then the same thing with your skins and the outside, which are really thin. And when we looked at some of them, you can see how the skins of the outside of the, ta the topper shells are actually riveted to the basically the frame the ribs that go up and down. And so the outside skin is riveted to all of those, which okay, is fine. But then the inside also has a paneling to it and they're not as well insulated, in my opinion, as something like the AT is. The AT and these panels here, I believe they're called like a, comp a composite laminate uh, a panel or something like that and what it is is there's actually a one inch thick composite uh, material in, underneath this aluminum that acts as an insulator barrier. There are all the seams both on the aluminum and on the inside of this it's either been glued or welded and riveted together there's actually no air infiltration whatsoever. What's also nice about the AT versus some other ones is this is 0 .090 thick aluminum and how they put this aluminum on here. As you look across the bottom of this rail and around the corners, everything's been bent to meet its certain angle. And then where there's two angles that meet together and there's a seam, they actually weld that together. 
Now there's other spots like above over here that when they take two pieces together, what they'll do is they'll use like something like an RTV type uh, material. They'll put it between there, that caulk, they'll put it between there. They rivet everything down and then that joint, now that it's been sealed, they go one step ahead and they seal it again. The inside, the same thing. Everything's been carpeted and insulated. Everything's been sealed and lipped over. Wherever there's a rivet, there's also glue, some type of adhesive underneath that joint. And there's also the welds go across here. So those are some of the huge build qualities that we liked with the AT versus some other ones. The other things that we liked about AT versus some other companies is they gave you a basic platform as in you either had latches that are panels that lifted up and closed and that's the only option you had or you had a specific window that you always had to have in that one spot. And what was nice about AT Overland is they give you a blank canvas, meaning this entire topper right here is all aluminum insulated, paneled, and complete. I don't have to have any windows on this at all, but what we opted to do is we got a window at the back end of the truck, at the, at the topper, and I got a window at the front of it. And the reason I wanted to do that is because even though I'm comfortable with driving a truck, this is, again, my commuting vehicle as well, and I had to take into consideration as a daily driver, I wanted to have as much visibility as I possibly could without probably uh, circumventing some privacy when I was camping or doing other things. So what Kasha and I ended up doing is having windows put on both the front and the back of the topper. Now the one bad thing about it is, and this would be one of the few critiques I would have with AT Overland toppers, is that I really wish the front window was, now they do offer you a slider, which is fine. We didn't do a slider per se because we don't have a sliding window on our truck. It's a solid glass window like a lot of people's pickup trucks have. So that was one reason why we didn't go with a slider. The other reason was is the slider, from what we understood, the slider on the topper it did slide open and closed but like on my Lear canopy the slider opened and closed but it also came out it was actually removable so that allowed you to clean the back window of your truck as well as the window of the topper and from what we understood that window didn't do that so we just opted to go with a solid window up front as well as the back uh, it also allows you some privacy too because now we don't have to worry about putting curtains or anything on either side of the truck. But again, I love the idea of a blank canvas and plenty of options. Things to talk about again, uh, we opted to go with a solar panel and it's the Solgo. And I'm gonna have to pull up my notes again and uh, just so I can get this right, it is, um, it's called the 185 watt Solgo SOL-GO flex panel. I wanted to touch base on this because I think it's one of the most important parts to a rig when folks like us are looking to upgrade and do things. A lot of us want to go solar so we can always top off our batteries because we're running something like a refrigerator or other types of appliances. The Solgo and with AT Overland, they're the only company right now that I'm aware of that uses the Solgo 185 watt panel. And what's nice about those is several things. The first off, the Solgo, it's designed in a way that if you covered a part of the panel or if you only left one of the solar squares and all the other ones were covered, your panel is gonna still generate some intake of solar energy to top off your batteries and operate your equipment. Other panels, when they start to get covered, they won't charge you anything at all. Second thing was the Solgo, especially with what Mario and his crew did, the Solgo not be only being efficient, but it's such a smooth, low profile. This panel sits completely flat on top of the roof, only sitting up maybe barely a quarter inch of a thick, or a quarter of an inch thick, but the connecting points that come from the panel and go into the roof of the topper, those are probably three quarters of an inch. It's really almost no thicker than my finger is. And that's really nice because you're not getting snagged. When I did a lot of trips over in Eastern Washington and Oregon, there was a lot of us driving through a lot of heavy brush and branches and trees and everything. And I could just imagine having something sticking up over off my roof. Branches and stuff are gonna get stuck underneath there. I could just see now getting my panel damaged or destroyed and then having to re replace it all. And that was something I didn't wanna really have to think about. The other thing nice about the roof is that everything is solid aluminum up there. The entire roof of 
of the Atlas is actually one full piece. So the part that you see right there is actually the same material on the roof and it's been bent down and around and then it's welded at the corners. Then the insulating panels put on the inside of it. Now why that's important is because a lot of other toppers actually have like a rubber type membrane as a roof like some campers do. Kosh and I've had fifth wheels and campers in the past and one thing you always had to worry about and that had happened to us is getting some deep scratches or gouges in that top. Then you have to go back in with some type of uh, roof type membrane and like Henry's Tropical and stuff and actually coat the roof and seal it back up again. With the Atlas, it's a solid piece of aluminum so it's not getting damaged. Matter of fact, the fellow that was installing this was telling us and showing us his topper. We had about a three to four inch round branch fall from about 30 feet up in the air off of a tree during a windstorm, came down, smacked the roof of his Atlas and all you could see is this little tiny mark at the corner. Other than that, everything was good. So the durability on a Atlas, once again, cannot be expressed enough to show what you're getting for your price. One of the other things that's really great about the Atlas and the other uh, uh, the other AT Overland products is all the hardware, stainless steel, your hinges, your latches, all your clasps that lock the hood, the, the top down are all stainless steel. Uh, the gas struts on the on the uh, lift gate window are just super strong. They go up really nice and strong, and they hold it. You can pull on a little bit and kind of tug it to feel that strength of those gas shocks. Really pleased with those. Also going inside the topper now is what I'm gonna show you is our max air fan. One of the other options besides solar, you can actually get an air, a max uh, fan put on this. And we went with the 6200, I believe it was. Yep, the max fan 6200. And I have to say, we've never had one before. We had some fans in our campers and our, 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 uh, our fifth wheels. And you turn them on and yeah, they're okay, like the little bathroom fan and stuff, but they, they do have a little noise. So we were kind of hesitant about what to get. I did some research and saw some people, you know, poo-pooing about the, the fans and stuff that they had. But we went ahead and we, we bit the bullet. We said, you know what, let's go with the 6200 that AT Overland offers, and we did it. Phenomenal fan, super happy with it. I, I can't speak enough. Really quiet at its low setting, it comes on, you know it's running, there's gonna be air that sucks up out of the topper and I could definitely sleep with it no problem. As you go through the settings, it still is not that loud. There's no banging or rattling or anything. It's just a nice smooth hum, just kind of that white noise. And Kasha said the same thing. She says, I could sleep with that, that wouldn't be an issue. What's also nice about the, the Max Fan 6200 at AT Overland offers is it has a forward and reverse, meaning you can draw the air out of the topper and put it up and evacuate it out to outdoors, or you can suck air from outside into the topper, and either way you could create circulation. What's nice about this is even though we only have the solid windows in the front and the rear, and that we have no windows on the side, when you're using the fan, you're using it because the topper is up. Well, when the topper's up, there's actually four windows inside the heavy canvas, and you open those up and you It'll let you draw air and circulate air, and we thought that would be plenty for our needs. Now, the other reason why we like this topper and the options you get with it is that it comes with an insulating panel or an insulating liner. That is extra, it's an upgrade, but we opted for that because after talking a few people and doing some research, we found out not only were people happy with the insulating qualities of the thermal liner that AT Overland offers for wintertime use, but a lot of people say they leave it in 365 because in the summer, yes, the topper does reflect heat because again, it's aluminum and it's that real thick and it just shines off that sun, kind of like a um, those little uh, um, dome type tents that people are using nowadays and they're all that silver reflective material. That's to reflect the light rays away and not absorb the heat. Like some toppers are black or they're dark gray or they just don't have enough insulation so they do absorb heat. And if you don't have an air conditioning unit, it does get a little uncomfortable from what I've heard. But with this topper here, not only is the body itself gonna reflect the sun, but the fabric and the material along then with the insulating liner help basically keep you insulated, kind of like a cooler. 
Now, I think I might have skipped over some of the actual standard um, equipment or options or basically just some more of the details with the AT Overland uh, Atlas versus some other ones. And I did mention, I think a couple of times about the aluminum, it's a, it's a zero point, it's a point zero nine zero thickness of aluminum. The fabric, it's called Firest, uh, Fire, Re, Fire Cyst. Fire cyst, F I R E S I S, fire cyst. So it's a very thick UV uh, water repellent, UV resistant fabric. It does not let any light in. So even if you didn't have your thermal, thermal liner in, or you maybe you opted not to get it because of costs, you're still gonna get a lot of that light blocking with that type of fabric. Really thick, really durable, very happy with that one. The roof itself, you can walk across the roof of the Atlas as it's closed like this. It's rated to hold over 600 pounds. What's also nice is now we only have the solar panel and the max fan on there, but I thought maybe later on if I thought the need would be, it would be required, we would get an extra Solgo 185 watt panel on there. But I also thought maybe I could get some L-Track and I can mount some L-Track on the roof and put a cross member on if I ever thought I want to put something else up there. Again, I highly doubt I'm going to do that because the reason I bought this is to stay low profile and very slim so I can get in and out of places, deflect those branches easier, not get snagged too much and, and, and not be too burdened with things on the roof of my truck. Besides that, why would I put something on the roof of my truck if I can maybe put it on the side of my truck? Uh, one of the other things, let's see here, the bed itself. Now the bed inside, it's not some of the biggest beds in the industry, we'll give you that, okay? There are a couple of competitors out there that do have a pop-up and you do get a more width when it comes to sleeping. But again, then that topper hangs over the sides of your truck a little bit more. Again, something I didn't really want because I'm traveling, it's a commuter, I didn't like that. But also, if the build, if the Atlas was built like it's built, but it was large like that, then I would have went that route. But again, it, I go back to the construction of the Atlas and the build quality and the engineering. But the bed itself is, going back to that again, it's definitely big enough for two people. It's like 48, 50 inches wide. It's about 80 inches long. Holds me and Kasha just fine. It overhangs the cab of my truck right here by about 48 or 46 inches. And it holds up about 500 pounds. Really nice. When the topper's popped up, and if you want, you can just sit up in bed because there's a headroom while sitting on a mattress of 36 inches. I'm 5'10", 5'11"-ish right in there. Uh, between me and Kasha, we can sit in the bed. We can you know, watch a movie on a tablet, just read, wind down for the evening and not have to worry about it. Maybe put a couple of pills behind us and be all good to go but what's nice is you don't have to always lean your to your left or your right because you don't have that headroom what's also nice is when you slide the two pieces together because of course there's two panels on the inside one is permanently right here the other one moves back and forth through the topper you push that off to the side and you push it to the back of the topper you can sit up above there so we could sit up there and lounge Kosh and I and then we could actually have a couple of people and kind of entertain a little bit at the campsite say for instance if the weather bad two other two people could sit up there put a couple of pillows or something behind them and four people could just shelter in place have a little snack a couple of drinks just talk about the trip in general to shelter out of the rain or the wind so that's pretty much it in a nutshell I think this is be the final take of this video again I do appreciate all the support with everybody like you watching the channel um, yes the AT overland topper is not for the faint of heart it is definitely a big big upgrade from a Lear topper from old trip but again everything has a purpose and everything has a certain type of application this is no different there is so much I can do with this topper now it's basically a clean slate and many of you I know will probably have a good idea what I might be doing on the sides of these but wait and see maybe I'll surprise you so anyhow you guys take it easy I'm gonna let you go I'm gonna finish this on a high note remember like share subscribe all the good stuff thank you again everybody for all the support and keep an eye out for more videos both about the topper and other things in general I uh, want to again welcome people like Vivor General's Hot Sauce Augustin Farms Max Gunworks SOB Rifles Forgotten Coast Canine Off-Road Tents and Goana Equipment to just name a few people for supporting me on the new channel so y'all have a take, take care have a good one we'll see you in the next video bye